one sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. sacrifice. What is sacrifice? Sacrifice is to willing to surrender something very valuable to you as an act of devotion. Somebody say devotion. devotion. If you hear my voice, say yes. yes. Look up here. Sacrifice is to surrender. Somebody say surrender. surrender. Something very valuable to you as an act of what? Devotion. If you are here, say yes. yes. Sacrifice is laying down an acceptable offering at an inopportune time in an appointed place to gain God's attention. Look at the four things I'm mentioning. Sacrifice is laying down an acceptable offering in an inopportune time at an appointed place to gain God's attention. Did you get the things I mentioned? Uh, do you get the things I mentioned? Ah, uh, This is a teaching. And I need you to hear me. If you help me say yes. yes. When I mean an acceptable offering, it's not every offering that you give that God accepts. Inopportune means at a time that is not convenient for you. At a time that is not what? Ah, oh, come on. At a time that is not what? Oh, there are people that want to give to God when it's convenient. God said sacrifice is at inopportune. Somebody say inopportune. The time you feel like, if I give this now, no matter what you give to God, if it's not something that moved you, it's just, a, it's just an offering. Hello? It's not a sacrifice. Let me give a simple illustration. If a native man who worships a demon god, a shrine, did a farm now, and the farm did not produce much fruit, and he wants to farm the next year, what does he do? He carries the fattest yam that he got from the last year farm. Is that true? Ah? Huh? If there's any year he should not give a sacrifice, it's the year that his harvest did not come in. But after the harvest did not come in, to make sure that the next year doesn't repeat the same thing, he takes hefty sacrifice and puts on the altar to change it. Is that true? Am I, is that true? That's the mentality. But people think that they have to give to God when it's the best for them. No, no, no. Inopportune time. Third place, at an appointed place. Somebody say appointed. appointed. No, you didn't hear. Can I say appointed? appointed? You don't give a sacrifice at every place. You give a sacrifice at an appointed place. Let me still use a native illustration for you. I know some of you used to go to native doctors before you got born again. So that's not a problem. You understand me very well, well. Come, are you with me? If a native doctor told you now, uh, you see this thing I finished preparing for you, go to that corner over there where the road meets like this. Go and drop it there. Or go by the riverside and drop it there. If you drop it any other place, did you drop it? Why? There's an appointed... Is anybody getting what I'm talking about? Spiritually also, there's an appointed place. Now when you do these three things, you gain God's attention. So a man can drop an offering and not gain God's attention. He said, God had no respect for the offering of Cain. So you can give and God doesn't respect what you gave. Are you with me? If you have me, say yes. yes. In Exodus 20, 24, the Bible said, God said, an altar of earth thou shalt make unto me and shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offering and thy peace offering, thy sheep and thy oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee and I will bless you. How many believe God recorded his name in Gateway? Can you lift your hand? In this house, may he bless in the name of Jesus Christ. You know what Moses told the people in the Tom chapter 12 when they were about to enter the promised land? Verse 10, he told them, when you get into the land, in verse 11, he said, then, there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Are we there? Yes, if you are with me, say yes. He yes. said, then there shall be a place. There shall be what? Yes. Somebody say a place. Yes. Can I say a place? Yes. 
Do you know what Israel used to call their tabernacle in the wilderness? They call it a tent of meeting. It doesn't mean they gather there to meet one another. They gather there to meet with. He said there shall be a place. Quit the Lord shall choose to cause his name to do what? He said, Vida shall you bring all that I command you. Your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithe and the heave offering of your hand and all your choice vows which you vow unto the Lord. Let me hear amen like thunder. What is the significance of sacrifice? Are we still here? Number one, sacrifice is the consummation of worship. Somebody say worship. worship. Consummation. Say it with me, consummation. consummation. Can I say consummation? consummation? Do you know what the Bible says? You don't appear before God empty-handed. Because every time you worship without giving a sacrifice, giving an offering, that worship is non-existent. So sacrifice is the consummation of worship. Number two, sacrifice is what gives life to the cry of desperate faith. If your faith is desperate, sacrifice gives life to it. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, when David was in trouble, and 70,000 people have died in Jerusalem. And David cried to God. The prophet said, take a sacrifice. Go to the threshing floor of Aaron now and place it there. And God will hear your cry and the plague will cease. And the voice of his desperation was heard by his sacrifice. By this sacrifice of today, God will hear your voice. Sacrifice number three is the key that sets up and opens spiritual gates. The key that sets up and opens spiritual gates. If there's a gate you want to open, is by sacrifice. Remember when Abraham made the sacrifice as lose? If you are in this, say yes. When Abraham made the sacrifice as lose, the Bible says there, after Abraham has died, Isaac, Jacob, and all of that, are you still in this building? Jacob was passing there and Jacob saw that stone and put his head on the stone and suddenly saw that there was a ladder going from earth to heaven. When Abraham made the sacrifice spiritually, a ladder was built there going from earth to heaven. There was spiritual traffic. What did Jacob call it? He called it a gate. He said, this is the gate of heaven. You want to establish a spiritual gate and call forth angelic traffic is by sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. sacrifice. The first significance. Sacrifice is the mystery that mobilizes spiritual forces. That's a mystery. Brothers and sisters, even a native doctor, an occult man, a yeye prophet, and all of that. When they want to mobilize spiritual forces in the negative, what do they do? What do they do? You are here, you want to mobilize the force of faith without a sacrifice. You want to mobilize angelic activity without a sacrifice. You want to mobilize the power of the spirit of God with a gift of the spirit without a sacrifice. How does that work in your understanding? Amen? Do you understand me? And when it comes to sacrifice, it's not the amount, it is the heart. A woman gave a widow's might, and Jesus said that's the best. Why? Not because it was the highest, the heart was right. Can I talk to you? Sacrifice is the legal seal on any covenant transaction. Every covenant is ratified by sacrifice. If you bought a land now, the man you bought it from sign, you sign. After all the signature, you know what they do? They still go and seal it. Is that true? Yes. Huh? Yes. If there is no seal on it, if there's a problem, you take it to court. Will you win? No. no. Sacrifice is the legal seal on your covenant. Oh God, I have a covenant with God. I have a covenant with God. I have a covenant with God. God said, where is the seal? Where is the blood seal on the covenant? It's not there. You're not part of it. Do you understand why we've been talking? Come on, if you're going to say yes. yes. You know when Paul wrote, listen, listen, listen. When Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, 
he began to compare the Corinthian church with the Macedonian church. He said to the Corinthians, you speak in tongues more than any other person. The gifts of the Spirit walk in you more than any other person. He said, but there's a problem. He said, the Macedonians give more than you. So the blessing is more with them. He said, I want you to be also good in this grace. You say, why do they compare us with other churches? Because he said, some people are more forward. Somebody said, forward. forward. And Paul said, I don't want another person more forward than you. Secondly, he said, I am giving you this commandment to prove the sincerity of your love. We are dealing with the extreme sacrifice. Somebody say, extreme. extreme. I can't. Somebody say, extreme. extreme. When life and destiny is a strength, Drastic actions are recommended. Desperate times demand desperate measures. And desperate people do desperate things. So, when you find out that there's a threat, great. That's, you see, anybody hearing my voice? Believe me. If you understand this, an unbeliever will never defeat you again. You didn't hear me. Uh, are you hearing me? Extreme sacrifice is when someone who feels a threat of destiny decides to answer that threat by tearful sacrifice. You feel your destiny threatened and you decide to answer it by Tearful sacrifice. It's when a person who has been frustrated enough decides to raise a dangerous altar so that the destiny attacks will break and the gravity will leave his destiny to soar. That's what we mean by extreme sacrifice. Gateway International Church invites you to our special weekly program. Faith Clinic every Thursday, 9 a.m. to midday, featuring healing, deliverance, and spectacular miracles. Ministering in partnership with the Holy Spirit, Pastor George Izuma at the Church Auditorium. Gateway International Church, 3032 Elion Panama Road of Ada George, Mile 4, Port Harcourt. Plan to attend this clinic where Jesus is the Supreme Physician. For more information, call 0803-067-5153 or visit www.gicfamily.org. Come, Jesus exceeds experience. Expectations. If you are here, say yes. Let me give you a simple case in the Bible. Are you here? Are you here? In 2 Kings chapter 3, 26 to 27, you see a story there. It says, and when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him, he took with him 700 men that drew swords to break through even unto the king of Edom, but he could not. This man fought and lost. Look at what he did, verse 27. Then he took his eldest son, his eldest son, that should have reigned in his stead, and offered him for a bond offering upon the wall. This man took his son, an evil unbeliever, took his son and offered him. And there was indignation against Israel. And they departed from him and returned to their own land. You don't understand, so let me explain. Are you here? Listen, there was war between Israel and Moab. Israel are supposed to be the people of God. Moab worships a god called Moloch, an idol. Now, as Israel was going to the battle, they went to a man of God called Elisha. Have you heard of Elisha before? 
And Elisha is a true prophet of God. And Elisha told them, as you go for this battle, you will win. You will defeat Moab. You are coming back with a testimony. They say, yes, sir. They dropped an offering and they left. And they went to the battle. And they started beating the people of Moab. Moab suddenly saw that the battle was about to destroy them. They have fought. This king of Moab gathered 700 choice soldiers and tried just to run away. Just to run away. And he couldn't run away. So the battle has surrounded him. This man suddenly said, no. I need to make a desperate sacrifice. Not to Jehovah, to an idol. He took his first son. Don't forget, the prophet said, Israel will win the battle. This man took his first son. Laid him on the altar and sacrificed him and burnt him to a demon. And suddenly, what the prophet prophesied was cancelled. That's why unbelievers defeat you. That's why the occult defeat you. Because you didn't understand that when the battle tension rises and you look like you're winning, a desperate sacrifice can turn things against you. Three things about extreme sacrifice. Number one, when a spiritual hand is against a man, only a spiritual response can help him. This man, the king of Moab, a spiritual hand was against him. He was losing because a prophecy was fighting him. So the only answer is a spiritual response. Somebody say spiritual. Can I say spiritual? Everybody here, please listen to me. Learn to discern situations by the spirit. Somebody say spirit. When you look at something and it looks like there's a spiritual hand involved in this battle, Please handle it spiritually. My God. Am I talking to somebody here today? Handle it spiritually. Be desperate about it. You know, the people of Jericho told Elisha. He said, Elisha, please listen. You see our city, everything is beautiful. But the result is stupid. Listen, listen. When life is a picture of contradictions, a mystery is at work. Hear this. The second point I need you to understand is this. That the pain of sacrifice cannot be equated with the consequence of destiny failure. The pain of sacrifice cannot be equated with the consequence of destiny failure. You are not hearing me. Can I ask you a question? Huh? What the king of Moab did, as far as you are concerned, you look at it and say, oh, this was, this was a wicked thing. But look at it this way. Look at it this way. Hello? If the king of Moab lost that battle that day, that son he sacrificed, will he still be king? Eh? He can't be king. Because if he lost the battle, Israel will have killed that same boy still. Secondly, Israel will have killed his wife and other children. Am I talking to somebody here? Too? All his chief officers will have died for it. So by one loss, everything is wiped out. Why don't one person go so all of us can survive? He said, kill him. Let all of us live. You did, is anybody getting what I'm talking about? You decided, no, I can't give to God. And lost a destiny position. Why? Because you do understand. You know, there are two pains in life. The pain of discipline and the pain of regret. Any man that will not pay the price for the pain of discipline will pay the price for the pain of regret. And when regret grabs you, for generations you keep remembering when you missed it. May you never return with the pain of regret. The third thing I want to remember is this. A believer's routine faith can be countered by an unbeliever's desperate altar. A believer's routine faith can be countered by an unbeliever's desperate altar. Did you hear me? 
That's what happened to this. A prophet of God said you win and they lost. Look up here, everybody. If you're here, say yes. Do you remember Herman and Mordecai? Remember them? Remember them? Do you know why Herman took over? Do you know why Herman messed up Mordecai for years? Huh? Mordecai was a regular Christian. Herman was a practicing witch. You didn't hear me. Herman was not taking anything for chance. Let me show you. You see, what one person does at one time can show you a picture of who the person is. Talk to me. Are you with me? Look at this. Look at this. When Herman wanted to go to the king, to ask the king for an opportunity to kill Mordecai. You know what Herman did? Herman offered sacrifice for 12 months straight before he went to ask the king. It's in your Bible. This man kept doing juju and incantation and sacrifice for 12 months before asking the king. So that before he stepped in, he has already, everywhere is wired. When he went to the king and said, there are some people that disrespect, the king didn't ask who are they. The king didn't even know his wife was among them. The king removed his ring and gave to him and said, kill them. I will pay you to kill them. Why? The king wasn't thinking again. Somebody has used automobile. Am I talking? Somebody has, somebody has corrupted the medulla of the king. My God. Are you hearing me? You see some decisions some people make and you say, is this man thinking? Didn't he see the truth? It's not about truth. It's that somebody arrested his brain. Now, do you understand that Herman was not the one that found out who wanted to plan a cure against the king? It was Mordecai that found out. Mordecai passed the information. Who was promoted? Herman. Why? Mordecai is a regular believer. Herman is a practicing You saw pre his destiny. The only time they escape from him is when they say, if we perish, we perish. But something must go. The reason you are struggling is because you don't want to change your life. Can I talk to you? Yes. My God, can I talk to you? Yes. You know, when these people, when Elisha told them, he said, you are going to win. You know what the Bible said? The Bible said that in the morning they offered an offering and they left. They had an offering on the altar being countered by a human sacrifice. Put them together. But you are not provoking that altar because you believe that somebody needs something from you. That's why I'm teaching you this today. You are asking what does God want? I said number two, God wants first place. Two, he wants worship. Three, he wants faith. For he wants soul. Five, he wants sacrifice. If you keep laying these things before him, when you give God what he wants, your life is guaranteed. Please, can we go with me? The first way you give to him is by reverential love. Somebody say reverence and love. So you don't give to God as if it's duty. The second thing, you give in faith expectation. Somebody say faith. Somebody say expectation. When you give, expect something. Lord, by this altar, 2016 is delivered. Am I talking to somebody here today? But you see, your brain is corrupted by what you are seeing in the world. From today, may a spiritual destiny open to you. Your amen is not shouting to God. From now till the end of this year, expect favor. Yeah. So expect something good. Then finally, you give in total abandonment. Somebody say abandonment. abandonment. In the Old Testament, God told Israel. He said, give me burnt offering. Give me what? Do you know what burnt offering means? God says to this man now, sir, come. He said, I want you to sacrifice to me. Go and bring a cow. So this man brings a cow. He puts the cow on the altar. And God said, burn it. 
They burn the cow until the cow becomes ashes. Hello? You know today a cow can be 150,000. Huh? That is this man's 150,000 burnt to ashes. That cow is no longer, is not manure. It's not food. It has not served any purpose. God just said burn it, burn it, burn it. Even if your money is burnt on God's altar, walk away. What does it make sense to burn a sacrifice? Excuse, explain it for me. You see that. Walk away. The mentality of a stingy man is like that. They won't give anything. They want you to give to them. How do you get? Listen, if you are prospering today and you stop sowing, after some time, this prosperity will stop and attacks will begin. That's why you don't stop. Did you hear my voice? And if you are not sowing to God, you will never be conscious of divine protection. Every time you'll be afraid of what will happen next. Am I talking to somebody here today? That's how it works. When you give, it's with an abandon. I release this to God. Is anybody getting me? And anywhere you go and you lay your offering, walk away. 